Hi, and welcome to the demo video for connecting DChat and ActiveChat components to any service. For this example, I will be using Angular as my UA framework, but you can pretty much use any framework of your choice, and our documentation has extensive examples on how to get started with each one. Let's begin. You may first notice that I'm using the development version of DeepChat, and that is because the features displayed in this demo have yet not been released in the core version. However, when you are implementing DeepChat in your website, all you need to do is remove the dev part of the import name. And we're going to keep using dev for the rest of this demo. When you're defining the chat component, in order to connect it to a service, we need to give it a property called connect. And we're going to give it a JSON value that contains a property called URL, which is basically the address of the target server. And that's pretty much it for the basics. Now, a key thing to understand is that the chat component uses a particular body format for sending messages and expects a certain format to be returned. Of course, if you can't change your target service to work with the chat, we have multiple workarounds for that, which we'll cover later in this video. But first, let's quickly go into the documentation. The start of the connect page describes what message formats the deep chat component works with. By default, whenever a message leaves the component, if the message only contains text, it will be encapsulated inside a JSON that has the following format. If you're also including or just exclusively sending files, it will use a form data type. As a response, the component expects the following JSON format, which can contain multiple different properties. As an example, normal text is defined inside the text property, files are defined inside a JSON array, and if we go back, you can see multiple examples for other properties to suit your API needs. Now you may be questioning, how can you configure your endpoints to work with these formats? And for that, we can go to the examples section, click on servers, and here we have a multitude of examples that you can use to suit your backend framework of choice. Also, if you want to front an example for connecting to these demo servers, you can navigate to and use the UI React project, which has been pre-configured to automatically work with them. For this particular video, I have already checked out the repo and set up an express backend service using one of the examples provided. Let's try to connect it. Let's go back to our Angular project, change the URL property value, and start it up. Okay, let's give it a try. It works. Now here, the message communication was backed by a simple post request. And if you're using server sentiments for streaming or WebSockets, all you need to do is toggle the stream or the WebSocket properties, which are well documented in our website. Of course, in most cases, you probably have an existing service that you can't really change to support deep chat message formats. And we absolutely understand that. So to get around it, you can either use the interceptor properties or the handler function to augment the transfer bodies to your server needs. Now, the handler function is something that we've covered in another video. So for this example, we'll use the interceptor properties, and I'll quickly refer to them in our documentation. Now, there are two properties that we can use. The request interceptor, which is triggered before a message is sent out, and the response interceptor, which is triggered before the message is ingested by the component. Let's apply them in our example app. So the first thing we're going to do is clean up the syntax. And define the request interceptor property. Now to keep things clean, we're going to refer to the request interceptor via Angular state. And in order to do that in Angular, we will need to wrap the property name in square brackets. 
Of course, you can change this to the syntax of the framework that you're using. And we'll do the same for the response interceptor. Okay. And let's define the request interceptor property. Now, because we're using TypeScript, we can use the request interceptor type. Okay. And the request interceptor itself is just a function with a details argument, which contains the outgoing message body. And the return object must use the exact same format as the details argument. So here, we can pretty much change the outgoing message body or the headers. And for this demo, we're just going to keep things clean and change the body. So let's say hypothetically that your target server accepts a JSON with a key called prompt and it must contain the user message. So we're going to access it using the details body messages array and use the text property. So the deep chat component will now send a message that contains the following JSON format, where prompt is a key that contains a string value containing the latest user message. Similarly, if you're using the response interceptor, let's use the type. Now, the details argument here will contain the response body from the target service, and the return type must use the expected response type for the deep chat component. So if we refer back to our documentation, and for the custom request, the response type will be response, which is basically this type here. So to keep things simple, we're going to completely override the response from the server using text that says OK. And let's check it out in our live application. Let's say hello. Perfect. Now you can use the interceptors for other cases, such as printing out the bodies, tracking state, all sorts of things. And as I mentioned, we can also use a handler function for this. But the difference here is that the handler is used to completely overwrite the request functionality entirely using your code. So I recommend to check it out if that is something that fits your use case better. This concludes the demo. Make sure to check out our other videos for more examples. And as always, happy coding.